is our uh, elite team call. We do this every Wednesday night, uh, at least in my time. It's 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, and, and as a group of elites, this has been a lot of fun uh, with Vandy Flake and, and Kai Hayes and Debbie Crawl. And, uh, and it, it's just, uh, it's a different level of, of um, knowledge and learning. So tonight I, uh, I asked a good friend of mine, uh, Dr. Deb Biglione, uh, I'd like Deb to uh, tell us a little about uh, your background and maybe how you were introduced to Life Vantage and why you said yes. And um, I know this story already. <laughs> hey, you're a part of it, Gene. <laughs> yeah. Deb is, part, is on our uh, medical advisory board, uh, but but I wanted to tell you the first thing she said when we introduced this to her. <laughs> Go ahead, Deb. <laughs> okay. Well, wow, this is an honor. I, I'm excited to talk to you guys because I want nothing more to be an elite. But unfortunately, um, a virus ended our world a year ago and um, it's pretty much left me swamped for this entire year. But the good thing is um, I can tell you that um, I use our products every day and um, they're having a great impact in this current situation. That's probably all I can say about it, but um, it's been wonderful. I went into medicine basically because I, I, I'm a healer. I wanna heal people. I wanted to um, make people better. And uh, very early on, I realized um, that really wasn't what was going on. You know, We learned about disease and it was exciting at first when we learned about pharmacology um, because we learned about these medicines that would treat disease. But after a while you realize they're, they're treating a symptom. They're not curing people. They're not getting rid of the disease process. So it's a very kind of rude awakening to what medicine's all about. And that's not why I went into it. Well, as I started getting more into integrative medicine, looking into natural um, options and learning, they kept bringing up a term called oxidative stress. And uh, that oxidative stress was the root behind all diseases. And if we could get a handle on that, then we could make a true impact in helping the body heal and the person get better. So I've been hearing that term probably for about 10 years. Well, there's a conference that, uh, well, it's an organization called the American Academy of Anti-Aging Regenerative Medicine. And they have a huge conference every year in December. This year it was virtual, but um, it's in Las Vegas. And um, it gets bigger every year, which is exciting because it shows that more and more doctors like me are looking for better answers than just the pharmaceutical um, options that we have. And I had um, met somebody that you guys might have met at some of the uh, conferences, Dr. Bill Gale, and he had met some Life Vantage distributors, Gene DeLucia, uh, Dr. Sean McKee. Uh, I think those were the two that he knew. Anyway, you guys had what I called at the time your little um, powwow or pep rally in Las Vegas right before our conference. And he hooked up, he got there early, Bill did, and started hanging out with Gene and Sean and a bunch of other doctors uh, that were in Life Vantage at the time. Um, uh, Mark, uh, I have to think, Gene will tell me who all was there. Anyway, and your chief science officer was there also at the time and I, Bill was talking about, oh, you know, this conference and these doctors and this, these, this product and what he was at and wanted me to come out. And the more he talked, the more I'm like, oh my God, you're at a network marketing convention. Oh my gosh, Bill. And I was so jaded against network marketing at the time because I'm a target. Anytime somebody comes up with something in that marketing structure, they come hit me up because they're like, oh my gosh, she's going to make me rich, you know? And all the companies that I'd seen so far had no science or very little. They were basically quoting studies on an ingredient in their product, but they didn't have any data on their product. So I would write them a check to pay for the lunch that they brought me, crush their hopes, and kept telling my office manager, don't let them in the door anymore. I don't want to see these people anymore. I feel bad for them, but I'm not going to use their products. So that's the kind of attitude I had. And Bill's hanging out with these guys. And the more he, he objected to my objections, I was like, Bill, you're already getting brainwashed. You're drinking the Kool-Aid. 
get out of there, run. And I got so mad, I said, fine, I'm just going to bed. I'm not going to hang out with you guys. And the next day, they were all hanging out together. And I realized either I have no fun in Vegas or I hang out with these guys. And that much to my surprise, they were actually smart doctors. <laughs> I'm just like, why, what are, why are you guys so gullible? So we're at dinner and the chief science officer at the time is sitting across from me at the table and I knew the subject was going to come up. So I just said, okay, hit me up, give me your science. I'm going to blow holes in it. So we might as well get this over with at the beginning. And uh, Dr. Sean goes, we have 11 peer reviewed studies. And I, my mouth dropped open because I'm like, you have a peer-reviewed study on your product and he says yeah we have 11 and I said oh my gosh I would have been impressed with one well then Gene starts snapping at me and everybody else is laughing at me and they're like well who's the dumb one now who's the gullible one they had so much fun at my expense because um they they asked me to come to the lecture that Dr. Sean was giving the next day and I'm like I can't believe they're letting a network marketer talk at our convention I mean, I was so insulting. It was awful. And I wasn't planning to go to the lecture. But then when it came time for the lecture, they're all blowing up my phone and telling me where they're sitting and I had to go. So I went in there and I got introduced very differently than you guys. I got to see the actual scientific data, the graphs, all the stuff that you guys don't want to hear. And I was blown away. And I literally got chills from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet because I realized it was going to change everything about medicine in general. It was going to change everything about my practice because I knew the importance of reducing oxidative stress. And that's all they had at the time was the Procandum NRF2. And I, I mean, I just, I was thanking God. I said, this is amazing. You have answered my prayers. And at the time, let's see, that was 2014. I was still not recovered from a divorce I'd gone through in 2008 and 2009, not knowing that the whole um, market crashed at the time. I just knew that my personal life crashed, had accrued a lot of debt, and wasn't able to dig out of the hole, didn't know how I was going to keep my practice afloat. And I realized that God had also answered financial questions for me because I knew how network marketing worked. I knew the structure, and I knew if you had a really legitimate product, that you could make, make it work. So I had to humble myself, said I stuck my foot in the mouth and, and it was Christmas. And I said, you know, I can't do it right now um, because honestly, I didn't tell them, but my credit had been cut off. I, I was in that much debt, but they were promising to open up after the first of the year. And so I told them, I said, after Christmas is over, I'm gonna join. So as soon as they opened up my credit, I spent $2,500 on Procandum NRF2, and that's how I came in. And um, never looked back. I actually was Pro 5, I guess, by, I don't know, three or four months. And then I've stagnated because, again, you guys know you have to get duplication going. And um, I'm starting to get a little bit of traction now, but um, I changed my practice um, probably, I guess it was 2017, so not long after that. And um, a good part of my, my volume was actually patients taking product. And when I changed my practice, went concierge and this uh, lost probably, I don't know, more than three quarters of my patients, they got off product. So I had to start over again. And now I'm, I'm further along than I was, but, but you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys have stories where you had to start all over too. The, the big thing is never give up, just persist. You know, we know what we've got and we just have to spread the word. So, Gene, what did you say to me? Gene? Gene, you have to unmute yourself. Gene, unmute yourself. He, he was at that dinner. They, they had a lot of fun making we did fun, have of me. A lot of fun Especially when she said you guys all drank the Kool Aid. <laughs> yeah, I did. Now I drink the Kool Aid. <laughs> um, tell me some things that, that, you have seen. I know for me, the the first year or two that I started using this, my practice, my my belief grew tremendously because I saw results over and over again, in in um, just almost every patient I had, I got on this, I, I saw results. So, uh, tell me about your, uh, not necessarily results if you want to tell us that, but your belief as, as what you saw. Well, you know, I do very extensive lab testing 
um, look at uh, what they call advanced lipid testing. I look at inflammation markers and I just, I couldn't wait to see what this was doing. So I started out checking people's labs every two months to see when I would see a difference. I, and I believed in it so strong because I knew the mechanism that for me, it was just figuring out when I would see results. I would never question whether I would or not. But the interesting, my own personal story is I had inflammation in my fingers, bad family history, and I wasn't able to play guitar anymore because it hurt to do the frets. And I was using two hands to push in a syringe. I would have to brace my cup to pick it up for fear I would drop it. And I wasn't telling anybody about this because I didn't want people to know. And I was looking for answers. And so when I heard about this, I thought, wow, okay, maybe this will be the answer and my inflammation will go down. And sure enough, at two months, and this is just the NRF2 product. I am um, at two months, I woke up one day and my pain was down 50%. And I was so excited. But it was amazing. So that personally was awesome. But I started seeing labs change of it about six months. Oh, it says my internet can I, am I frozen? No, you're okay. good. Okay. Well, one of the things that's interesting now is they're using a term called metabolic dyslipidemia, meaning that your cholesterol gets out of whack at the first sign that something is amok in your body, something isn't right. And that's what I noticed over time because this product is not a direct cholesterol lower by any means, but I noticed that over time when people have been on this product for you know, over a year, their cholesterol started coming back in line with normal guidelines. And I'm like, this is crazy because there's no mechanism that it directly lowers cholesterol, but because you're improving the cellular health, the body is no longer either absorbing more or making more. It, it, it was doing that as a protective adaptive mechanism and it's no longer needed. So even that started straightening out along with inflammation markers and just patients um, getting better. I, you know, like I took um, somebody off three medications today. I never did that prior to having people on these products. So it's awesome. And I saw the same thing. My diabetics were amazing. I mean, I'm dropping even global A1C six or seven points. Uh, yeah. Their renal functions were back, going back to normal. I'm going, wow. <laughs> it was yeah. this is better than I even thought it was going to be. Um, yeah, renal function. That's markets. amazing. Yeah. 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 All the inflammatory markets. So I, I also I got a huge belief that first year or two that I really started tracking everybody in my office. So um, uh, tell me about. Uh, the medical advisory board. I know you were elected to that. I, I, I know that's a, that's a big deal because I was on the original medical advisory board. And uh, tell me about a little bit about that. Um, I, I don't know if you have a hand in developing products or do they talk to you about different products? Not enough. That's our biggest complaint that we're still kind of kept in the dark until the last minute usually. And that's very frustrating but every now and then they'll they'll ask us questions, you know, like what what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Where do you think we should go? You know, or do you guys have any ideas or connections and things like that? But honestly, we rarely hear it. We get to hear about it probably about when you guys do. Um, you know, it's about when they're ready about to ready to take something to market, which is frustrating. Yes, and speaking of taking to market, uh, I think everybody knows that we have a new product coming out, um, officially launching, I believe next month in February. Uh, I, I know you're probably not allowed to talk too much about it, but tell me about um, how you feel about the new product. I think it's a great adjunct to um, what we're dealing with right now. You know, we need to keep our immune system stronger and there's holes and, you know, we've got great gene activators, but there's holes and that we can help fill, you know, with additional products. I think one of the things that's hardest for me is, you know, I don't know how many gene activators we'll come up with, you know, cause I'm not a, a microchem or bio biochemist, but, you know, kind of like Amway, we want to have a whole full spectrum so that people aren't going to other companies to purchase what people should be taking anyway. And so we have to start looking at 
maybe like tiers of how our products are. We've got our great things, but if we can, you know, fill the gaps on other things, you know, like we did with the probiotic and the prebiotic, you know, I think that we need to do that so that we've got the full spectrum and people don't have to buy somewhere else. And I think that we do it better. Um, you know, for the most part, because we do really study our, our stuff and put super quality ingredients. It was one of the things back with Dr. Chevreau that was frustrating that they ended up taking the B vitamins out of our fat burn because she couldn't get a quality methyl, methylated B vitamin. You know, the folic acid was in there that there was a lot of controversy about that. And she could not get a quality methyl folate at the price point that we needed, so she just took it out, you know, because I'm not going to put something in there that's not quality. Yeah. And, you know, I love that we take that stance. And I was a little surprised they didn't have B vitamins in it, but that explains a lot. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's interesting. Um, where? Yeah, I mean, I would love to get it back. Honestly, I don't know. Flex, Flexus has methylated B vitamins in a lot of their products. And I don't know how they're able to do it at the price point they do it. Um, and that's something I'd like to look into. Do they have some kind of purchasing agreement or are they really not putting a quality um, methylated B vitamin in their product? Yeah. How, so, how do you introduce this to your patients when you talk to them about health? Uh, do you have a checklist of things you recommend them to? Uh, how do you do it typically? It, it varies, I guess, with each patient, but... Um, I try not to do it at the first visit because I don't want them to think I'm just selling them a network marketing product. And I'm probably a little too sensitive about that. But if they are knowledgeable about oxidative stress or if they come in with, you know, a ton of supplements, then I might bring it up. But I usually don't have a lot of time. But what I'll do is I'll look at them like I did somebody the other day and I, um, they were on ashwagandha, turmeric, um, several other ingredients. And I said, you know what? I said, I have something much better for you. that's going to be um, much more potent at what you're doing. And you're going to be able to drop all this and take another product, but we'll get into it next time. But I usually start talking about free radicals and how they're damaging their cells and causing inflammation, which causes further damage. And then I explain that it's a gene activator versus um, a supplement. But lately, here's been my problem all along. I get too technical, me and the doctor, that my office manager has taken the ball now. And she, like there was somebody today that I haven't gotten into it with her. She was marketing to her and telling her, hey, look, I know you don't feel good. She had COVID symptoms. She goes, you know, I'm going to give you some samples of this. It's going to make you feel better. And she's getting people on. And I thought, you know, it's a whole lot better coming from her. And she's getting a lot of patients to sign up for the business now because she's like, look, I did this at the beginning. I just needed a hundred dollars a month. Now I'm making 400 a month and I'm not really doing a lot. You know, I'm just telling friends and family about it. Next thing she knows, she's got another distributor and she's doing way better than me because I'm a detriment because they think they got to talk like me. So I think I'm finally going to get wow. some duplication by just shutting my mouth and letting them do it. Yeah. You know, and they tell their stories and it's just working a lot better. And when they tell you to try to get somebody to pro three as fast as you can, I'll tell you a check of five bucks gets them excited because that tells them it works. You know, so like my office is super excited now because they're seeing money come in, you know, that I haven't personally signed up a customer or a distributor for a while because I made a decision. I'm gonna let them have them all because I know in the long run, that's better off. And I'm you know, financially in a much better position that I don't need those fast start bonuses, but they do. And sure. since we're all locked in our office for most of our day, that's their source of people. Sure. So I'm just letting them have them. I, I have another question for you. I get asked this question all the time. What do I say to my doctor to get them to look at this? What, what would you tell somebody? It's horrible. I don't, you know, I've signed up a few doctors there, um, but they're like, a4M people. Um, most of them won't listen. And this, this tells you how bad it is. Okay, so I've been on the product for several years. I go to the hospital on a Sunday to visit one of my patients. And the colleagues that I used to work with in the hospital are all sitting there doing rounds. I walked in, 
they recognized me immediately and they literally opened their mouth. Like, they were like, oh my God, you haven't aged at all. They were just like incredulous looking at me. And I really had trouble recognizing them because they were all old, gray and wrinkled. And they were younger than me. And I said, I've been trying to tell you guys that I have the magic bullet that, you know, reduces oxidative stress and, you know, will delay the aging process. Do you want to hear about it? And they're like, nah, <laughs> you know, I mean, you're wasting your time unless the doctor is interested, you know, and you could probe them, you know, but if they're just mainstream and haven't looked outside the box, they're not likely to, I mean, you could ask them, approach them from um, a business standpoint, you know, hey, are you, you know, getting burned out? Are you tired? Are you looking for multiple streams of income? That actually might be a better way. And then say, well, you know, we've got a science-based product you might be interested in that you could make some money in. They might listen to that more than you trying to sell them on science because they think they know more than everybody else. So, yeah. and let me well, tell I don't you, know, Gene, what made you listen? Um, I saw that ABC video, but I had been looking. I, I was actively looking to, for something other than uh, what I was taught in Western medicine. So I was already an A4M member. Uh, we were doing things like bioidentical hormones, but I wanted more. I, I knew there was more out there. So um, I, I believe if you put it out to the universe, it'll find you. And it did. My, my mm -hmm. UPS driver showed me that ABC video. So, but I can tell yeah, you what. If I'd we, seen that, I would have been on board. Yeah, that's the I first thing. Mad. I was like, I can't believe this product's been around that long and I didn't know about it. I didn't know about it. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you real quickly a short story. I have a very good friend up in Ohio. He's a pro three. He's gung ho. He talks to everybody about this. He's been after his doctor to look at this. He's been into his doctor's office four or five times. Doctor just blows him off. I said, when you go in for your appointment today, and there was a nurse practitioner there also, I said, you're going to take the, the um, Washington State study, you're going to turn it to page, I think it's nine or 10, and you're going to highlight where it says, uh, you know, the, the biggest breakthrough in medicine. I want you to just hand him that and say, please read this sentence. And when he did, and the guy read it, the guy goes, wow, you know, and he goes, and this, and my buddy goes, well, this is what I've been trying to tell you about for the last year, two years. So now we're, now we're, um, yeah, now we're getting somewhere because now we have an appointment to talk to him on the phone. Uh, we gave him the video to watch ABC News. So I think we finally get some traction there. So uh, it's in a way to, uh, for a lay person, I believe, to, um, to uh, uh, approach mm -hmm. somebody that's in medicine. Right. Well, and you might get a little more reception now just because the doctors, a lot of them are still in fear of what's going on. And, you know, I just, I was in a meeting tonight with people trying to sell me a machine and they were talking about a doctor down in Orlando who had a very, very hard time and is just super fatigued, hasn't recovered well. And I sat down with them. I said, take them five of the like Try synergizer packets. I said, tell him to take it, you know, with food. And I said, I think he'll feel significantly different in those five days. And then he can contact me how to get it, you know, because, you know, if you feel it and believe it, and a lot of that's that NAD depletion that this um, particular virus causes. Yes. Yeah. So, so what we're planning to do is all these people, because we have used this extensively um, because of the mechanism of action, that, and you can't talk to people when they're sick, you know, they, they're just, they'll take whatever you give them to get well, but we're making a database and we're going to go call everybody and do some follow-up and say, hey, would you like to learn more about what this product can do for you long-term? And so hopefully we'll pick up some people that way. It's just, we're, we're just still swamped. Excellent. Uh, and, and would you mind uh, taking some, a few questions from people? No, that's fine. Okay. We you guys are my heroes. You got there before me. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Hi, I'm Sylvia Morales from Austin, Texas. Hi. And um, hi, I, I'm originally really from Cleveland, Ohio, um, Dr. Jean. So I just want to let you know. But I'm here, I'm in Austin with Kai Hayes. And um, I do want to ask you a question. Have you had any customers show any improvement, anything mentally? Because my mom has dementia. And I've seen a little bit of improvement. 
Um, my sister, you know, has panic attacks and other people are going through depression and hope. And I told them this will help them. Some people see results, some don't. And I'm just wondering, have you noticed a lot of going on like that with any of your patients? Yeah, I mean, there's so, uh, the brain is so complex and there's so many things that can affect them that, you know, it could be different. It could be that they just haven't been on the product long enough or you're missing something, but it is one of the things that I use particularly um, with memory loss. I've seen better results, I think, with depression, but with memory loss, um, if I can change that curve, you know, say it's going like this, and if I can flatten it a little bit, that's huge. Yes. You know, if you can keep somebody out of a nursing home, you can keep them at home. And I have seen that extensively that I've been able to keep people at home um, you know, and keep them functional and, yes. you know, they eventually succumb to the disease, but they all did it at home, which was great. Yeah. That's like my mom, cause my mom has dementia and I, um, I noticed that she's pretty much plateaued and stay the same. So she's not deteriorating. Yeah. And if anything, I think yeah, I just true. slowed it down. I just slowed it down. And, and that's, that's it. what you have to tell them, you know, if I can slow this down, and make it not get any worse from here, that's a win because there's not, yes. no drug that can do that. You know, so that's, that's huge. Okay. And the other so question- figure out more what's going on with, you know. With and this. the other question is too, um, I know you're not supposed to say anything, but do you think in the future we may have something for um, um, hormones? <laughs> because a lot of people are asking me, will NRF2 help with the hormones? <laughs> It does help with symptoms of menopause, for sure. Um, you know, some of the like hot flashes and things like that, because there's been a lot of testimonies where it helps. Um, it's not going to replace your hormones. It will get a little more life out of your own equipment because it's um, delaying the aging process. So it'll be interesting, like these people that are starting in their 20s to see what exactly it does. Because my own personal story is I had a uterine ablation. So, you know, I didn't know what's going on. And I ended up having an MRI. I think I was 56 on my back. And the um, radiologist commented that I was ovulating, that I had follicles. And I was concerned because my mom had died of ovarian cancer. And I called him up. I said, why are you talking about my ovaries? Why are you talking about my ovaries? You know, and he says, because you're still ovulating. And I saw how old you are. And I was like, oh, that would be the the product I told you about that you didn't want to take. <laughs> but, you know, so yeah, it was keeping me physiologically younger, you know, so it can, it can delay that, but eventually it's going to happen to you. But I don't think we'll do hormones in, in that they are drugs, basically, and we're a nutraceutical. Yeah, okay, you're, I'm not hearing you anymore. Sylvia, you're muted. I think you're, you're muted, actually. Dr. Deb, can I just add something? It's Jill. How are you? Hey. Uh, I just want to tell you guys, I was going through menopause and so was my sister. The full vitality stack will stop them in their tracks. I do not have any more menopause whatsoever. No more sweating. So you need the full vitality stack. It, it works. Okay. That's all yeah, I want. The fish oil really adds something to that as well. Correct. It's the fish oil because when, before when we took the activated essentials, it was good, but without the fish oil, it's the combination, boom. So you need the, the whole combination. So I just wanted to add that. And how old are you now, Miss Deb? I don't even know how old you are. I'm 61. Stop it. She looks good. <laughs> no, she doesn't okay, look good. She, she looks, looks freaking good. amazing. You should yeah. see her in her bikini. Yeah, I look ugly uh, today with my uh, hair. Yeah. Oh, all right. I'm, I'm going to shut up because I'm only 57. And you can't tell I can't. everybody because I don't want people to know. I mean, but sometimes oh it helps God. me. I, I, I'm, I'm, you got me on that one. I really thought you were, I'm 57. I thought you were my age. Okay. You got me on that one. Good Lord. Well, okay. I'm, thanks. I'm gonna, the guys in today are going to bring some machines that help tighten the skin more. So I'm going to see how they work. <laughs> any, any help we can get, right? That's right. I have a question. Uh huh. Um, I, I have some customers who experienced palpitation. And they Are they on all of them or just one? Two. And they are both uh, 
taking a lot of medication. And they're young. You have to speak up. What? They're they're both taking a lot of medications, especially high blood uh, for high blood pressure. Uh huh. Uh, and, uh, so two of them actually, uh, just just recently, both of them. So I'm wondering if you had any patients like that. Um, I with the NAD, if somebody's on a lot of medications, I usually start the other two products first. Okay. And then I may add the NAD, but I would start with one just because it is somewhat of a stimulant. And, but then even if they have that, if you back off and then restart it later, they usually tolerate it quite well. And that, that's true with any of them. Okay. Um, you know, so you never know, you know, they're very powerful and the body detoxes and gets, you know, gets rid of heavy metals and all kinds of things. So the palpitations could be because you're removing something bad from the body. So you just usually have them stop or back off and then restart and often they're fine. And it could be totally unrelated, you know, but they're gonna, the first thing they're gonna blame is the supplement. And the same thing with other doctors are gonna always blame something natural. Yeah. They'll never think it's their medication that they're taking. Right. They always think it's the natural product. Thank you. I have another question. Um, when it comes to what if people are saying that they're allergic to green tea? I mean, we don't have that much in our product, but I wouldn't think it would affect them. Would it be bad just for let them to try the sample to see if it affects it if it affects them? I would find out what their allergy is first, you know, because if it's something where they get hives and breathing problems, then you wouldn't mm. want to do it. But if it's just they, their heart races or, you know, their stomach's bothering them, you know, it is a very, very small amount in our product. And I think if I'm correct, Jean, the caffeine is like 10 milligrams. So it's minuscule. Okay. But there are some people that are super sensitive to caffeine and they may not be able to do it. And I would have them start with a quarter of a, you know, tablet, just go easy with it. Yeah. But, you know... Dr. McKee always talks about, you got way more chance of being allergic to an ingredient in a Subway sandwich than you do in our products. You know, but, a lot, but a lot of times, you know, they'll, they'll notice something about their body that was there all along, but then they'll blame it on the product, you know, cause they're looking and they're, they're listening to their body more. But you do, you do a lot of removal of bad stuff. Cause I, I had the health department call me twice when I checked urine heavy metals on people that were on the NRF2 and they were very high in arsenic and mercury and they thought they were being poisoned. And I was like, no, this has been cumulative, but they're eliminating it now, you know, and they're getting it out of their body. And so those are, you know, those can cause side effects coming out. So you just have to, you know, educate people. Okay, thank you. Yeah, doctor, I have a question. I'm Kiki from Tucson. Um, I've been listening lately, uh, probably by now in the la in in this month, uh, for people that they've been taking pretending. None of them are blaming uh, pretending, but being on pretending, uh, they having problems with their high blood pressure. Do you think they should go a little uh, like? Uh, double the dose for a while or because I mean, their, their blood pressure is going up up yeah see i've never seen that with the nrf2 um okay. well I, I have the question what else they're doing <laughs> yeah find out what else they're doing one of them is my sister and she's she actually stopped taking all the medications that she was on Thanks uh -huh. to pretending, and she's like super happy. But all of a sudden, she has like crazy high blood pressure. And would yeah, that's what, what, what if it was if it was okay to double the dose, or because she has all the faith in the world in it, because help her to leave everything that she was on before. Well, she might if she was on blood pressure medicine, she might need to restart it, but maybe won't need as much. Because I tell people with high blood pressure, I said, I can't, I can't promise you that I'll be able to reduce your medicine or get you off, but I can tell you that I have been able to do that with a lot of people. So I don't mm -hmm. want to set unrealistic expectations with them. 
Yeah. You know, and, and it might help to take more than one. And, you know, if they do the, the dual synergizer, I mean, they're going to augment each other. So when you take the NRF1 and NRF2, it makes each one more powerful together than they are by themselves. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you, Doctor. I have a question, hey, Dr. Deb. Uh-huh. Oops. Okay. Is that Beth? Sorry, Brandon. Okay, so go ahead. Huh? My, my, aunt, my, my aunt, who's a doctor, she has problems with her kidney. I think it's not functioning well. She's been in uh, with our vitality stock for a while, but now she saw a nephrologist and she was asked to stop um, everything she's taking with Life Vantage. And uh, what is it that I can share, like um, anything, a peer review or something that, uh, you know, for them to understand that, that this is not just an ordinary network marketing product you know, that is so standard, and I've had nephrologists do that. I mean, the minute somebody walks in, the first thing they do is take them off everything natural, and then they'll retest them. And sometimes you just have to go through that process so that you prove to the doctor and to the patient that it had nothing to do with their renal failure. In fact, if it looks worse off the protanum, she'll want to go back on right away. But I mean, sometimes you just have to do it because otherwise they'll never be convinced and they'll tell them, oh, it's this doing it to you. But if they understand oxidative stress and its role in you know, cellular health, and sometimes you can do that. Well, if something you know, reduces oxidative stress and is clinically proven to do that, well, do you think that would be a good idea? And they'll usually say yes and say, well, this is clinically proven you know, here are the studies on PubMed, this reduces oxidative stress. So why would you want them to stop that? You know, you could try at that angle. All right, so should I ask yeah. her to just share the ABC with the, the nephrologist? Yeah, but I would probably do um, what the first, uh, what was it, the first three studies or something, Gene, that showed first the two. reduction, the one that first shows first. that you reduce oxidative stress 40% in 30 days. The one with the uh, uh, Colorado State University? Yeah, no, the, or the, even the Ohio State, if they'll listen to it. But, you know, it's yeah, just, they may not do it. But uh, do you find that, Gene? Sometimes I just have to let them go through that process of taking them off. They repeat the labs. They're never any worse. I mean, they're never any no. better off the stuff. Yeah, they'll you know, probably anything, get worse. They're going to be worse. Yeah, they'll probably right. get worse. And it's probably one of the other meds she's on. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's, it's it's never the proteanum that's doing it. No. Okay. Thank you so much. Hey, doctor. Uh -huh. um, my my name is Brandon. I'm here in in Kona, Hawaii. I have a friend. He's living on the northeast coast, and uh, he posted today that he was going home from the hospital. He had AFib. He's a healthy guy. He's a teacher. He's a you know he really works out a lot, but. Healthy is his lifestyle. Not, I, I don't know if he's organic or clean or that kind of healthy, but he's, he's in the fitness world. And I know he's gone through a lot of stress right, late, lately. And I did reach out and said, hey, man, I really want to chat with you. And I just, you know, I always just quickly go to PubMed, just put both NRF2 and whatever the thing is, just to see if there's even information out there. I don't try and understand it or anything, but I just want to see if there's a correlation. And there is in PubMed, but I, how would, what would, like as a friend to him, what could I get him to even consider taking? So he's a personal friend. He's a personal friend. We were college soccer players together and he's in his mid forties. Now I know he recently, like recently meaning a year plus gone through a divorce and I can tell by his life that it's hurting him. But so there's lots of stresses in the background. And I, the first thing that popped in, out in that PubMed study that I looked at was, yes, there is a correlation between oxidative stress. So I do want to at least tell him that, but I, I mean, if it's just come I from a hospital. Just, you know, approach him as a friend and, and say, hey, you know, I saw this happen to you and, you know, empathize with them and, you know, and say that, hey, I, you know, I found something that might be interesting to you, you know, because I know you're, you know, flatter him a little bit. I know you're always looking for healthy alternatives and, you know, and I, I was worried about you, so I, you know, Googled this or whatever, and I found this. I thought maybe, you know, you'd be interested in learning more, but don't do not do it from a salesy, but, you know, hey, I, I'm really interested in helping you out. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, definitely. That's what I want to do. But, but then yeah, to so help him out, what like could that. you give him? 
you know, and he may or may not, but I would think he'd be more receptive right now because he's probably like, why did this happen to me? What, what am I doing wrong? You know, what right. can and which, I What angle would you go in on the NRF2 or try Synergize it? Uh, I would probably, you know, do the oxidative stress because I'm a little bit wary of yeah, NAD with, uh, with the AFib. And so I almost won't ever start it. I'll get them on the other two and then ease into the NAD later um, okay. just because it is okay. somewhat of a stimulant. Okay. And then my friend just texted me and asked me, ask the doctor, which diabetes was it one or two where you started seeing them come off meds? Oh, it's two. Two. Okay. But Thank I, you. I, I yeah. have a type one though, that has massively reduced the amount of her insulin. And, you know, and I'm like, how does that happen? Because she didn't grow a pancreas. She keeps thinking she's going to, <laughs> you know, she's praying, but she's like, she went so far down on the amount of insulin just by reducing her oxidative stress. Her body didn't require as much. And she keeps her A1C right at six. And they don't really want her lower than that because the risk of hypoglycemia goes up too much for a type one. You know? okay. So way, she's done very well. Okay. Several patients. And, <laughs> and I tell my patients that you don't die of diabetes, you die of complications of diabetes. Right. And I've seen those things turn around tremendously. Right. We're probably not allowed to say that. Listen, um, let's do one more question because we're running over. I have a question that's not a medical question. I'd love to ask the doctor. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was wondering, what is your why in being a doctor and knowing you know the science and the answers? It must be so frustrating, you know, that when oh, people is. don't listen to you. So what is it that you do to keep your why you know, in front of you and keep yourself inspired? I guess it's just that inner passion I have to make people better. You know, right now, I guess I'm super frustrated with my situation because I haven't personally done anything to grow my business this year other than help my office. I've, you know, because meetings, everything went away, everything that I did to build it before. And I'm just swamped in COVID land. <laughs> but then I have to tell myself, you know, there's a time and a season. And, you know, now my office manager's fired up. And I know I've got this big database that I'm building that I can go back and do. But I think a lot that drives me is I'm very competitive. And it drives me crazy that I'm not elite, you know, <laughs> And they're changing the rules on the scientific advisory board that you got to be elite to be on there unless they make an exception. And it's driving <laughs> me absolutely bonkers. You know, I want to be elite and I want to have that financial freedom because um, I'd like to get into more of a mentoring role where I'm teaching other physicians, I'm traveling more. And I can't do that if I don't have money coming in from another source. Cause if I'm not in my practice, I'm not earning money. And um, you know, and, you guys are going to Marco's Island here and I'm not going. I mean, that stuff drives me nuts. So yeah, I want to, I want to be one of you guys. There's Thank you. Still for There's, still Cabo. Cabo. Huh? There's still Cabo. You can go to Cabo. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's starting to pick up. I mean, I can't believe there was a new patient in and Jay got her to sign up as a distributor. And I'm like, how in the world you do that? And she's sick with, you know, you know what? And Jade got her to sign up anyway. I'm like, I'm just going to let Jade work my business. There you go. Go bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yeah. thank you, Deb, for sharing You're with welcome. us. I really appreciate it. Uh, I know everybody else does too. And thank you, everybody, for uh, Yeah, and if you guys call. have any tips, thank I've probably you. heard most of them. But, you know, I always listen. If there's something I can do, you know, because I do do daily activity, but it's all – Basically, this last year has been all on my, you know, personal trying to help people get through this this season in our lives. You know, so we appreciate yeah. you, though, doctors. Oh, Both of welcome. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.